Well, not the greatest group, but we thought we'd get on and talk about revolvers today. Hi, I'm Ben Branham from Modern Self Protection, and this is Bob Main. And we're here as the Modern Handgunners to talk about revolvers today. And I brought one of my big, uh, I think this is actually an L frame. It's the Combat Master Model 67, but it was called the Combat Master Forever. It's built on a 38 special frame, and it actually takes 357 Magnums. Smith & Wesson has been making this for a long time. I like the smaller frame instead of the big 686, which would be the next size up. And that one still holds six rounds, just a bigger frame. So that's a lot to say that this is just a smaller frame gun that I enjoy shooting. And well, it's a lot of fun. My group could have been a little better, but I don't shoot revolvers, <laughs> but I should. And that's what this video is all about. Yeah. Is the revolver is an analog kind of thing. You can see everything move when you pull the trigger. I see the cylinder rotate and I see the hammer come back and then go forward and hit the round. So it's kind of cool that way. But the other way, it really, I think everybody should own a revolver, including you, Bob, to work yes. with every once in a while is because the trigger is that double action trigger. It's heavy, it's long, sometimes it stacks. Compared to all of our semi-autos, semi our Glocks, our Smith & Wessons, that trigger is a long, long trigger pull. You're looking at 11 to 15 pounds somewhere in there. So it's really heavy and then it has all these weird things that happen to it because it's different kind of stages of trigger you can feel it stack a little bit you so when i mean it stacks it gets heavier as you pull it and it just makes you hold onto the gun and makes your finger work better so that's one of the big things i like about just having a big full-size revolver like this and this one shoots 38s or 357s i shot 38s right there and the 38s they're not bunny fart loads, but they're really not, they don't hurt at all. Out of a full size steel revolver like this, the recoil is so manageable that it's just nice. Yeah, can I borrow that from him? Um, one of the things I wanted to say about revolvers, and uh, uh, some people may differ with me on this, but if I were you, you're gonna get a revolver, I would get one that is a 357 Magnum. Some revolvers are only 38 special revolvers. And I would recommend the 357 because you could easily and, and safely shoot both types of ammo from it. Um, yeah, and if you look at both types of ammo, like I right here, yep. you see that the shell is actually longer. Yep. So in the 357, both of them fit and will close. I have a 38 right here. And if I drop the 357 around in the, there, it doesn't go in all the way and work. the cylinder won't close. Yeah. So it's really cool. It's a safety measure that they put in when they built the 357 Magnum. It's a good safety measure, but if you drop the 38s in the 357, they both shoot. So you can put up the big old huge bear loads, or you can throw in some nice, easy, relaxing loads. Revolvers are kind of an underappreciated uh, weapon, I think. You know, we all know that six shots probably going to get the job done, and you know, if you're training with it, it's it's probably going to get the job done for you. And they're just so reliable. Let's talk a little bit about the reliability. Of them. So it's almost impossible to make them fail. As a, as a shooter, if they fail, you just pull the trigger again. And most of us have done it. And if you don't still do it, it's because you haven't trained yourself enough. But pull most of once, us, when, and if it fails, pull it again. Pull it again. That's it. That'll solve all your bad ammo problems. That'll solve just about everything. And when a revolver breaks, it'll break really hard because you'll know it. Like the trigger won't go anywhere. When you go to pull the trigger, it just, no matter how hard you pull, it won't move, the cylinder won't turn, and then we try to open the cylinder with a cylinder latch so you can load it and unload it, it won't come open. That's generally how the revolver breaks, and it does it two ways. One, the mechanism inside will break, just under time, everything breaks. And then the other one is you get ammo that runs loose. So, and ultra lightweight revolvers with heavy ammo, like my little Ruger, not so much this one, but a 357 version of this, if you shoot the heavy bullets, what happens under recoil is the revolver is holding on to the back of the shell. And when it recoils, it pulls that at the back of the shell. That round is just crimped in there on the end. All this is, is, you know, the machine at the end goes click on the top of the brass to hold the round in there. What actually happens is every time you fire it, this goes back and the bullet stays a little bit and the bullet elongates or starts coming out of the case. And at a certain point, the bullet will go too far out of the case and will get screwed up on the side of the gun and actually be sticking out of the revolver itself, the cylinder, and then it'll get hung up on the frame. 
So those are the big two ways that revolvers kind of mess up. But it's not very often. And you know, that other one is really the bullet setback thing. That's really from, or walkout setback, whatever you want to call it. That's really when you shoot itty bitty revolvers with big heavy reloading guns. Re big recoiling guns. Yeah, the ones that you think are painful and nasty to shoot. Yeah. Those are the ones that might do that. The last thing I think uh, we really should uh, not fail to mention is that another reason to buy a revolver is you can also get, like our last video, you can get a nice lever action carbine that will shoot the same ammunition as your revolver, and that's a plus, isn't it? Yeah. And I've actually got, so I've actually got a little different because this is my pocket Ruger. And I actually carry this, and I carried it to the range today. Here's my pocket holster. When I put it in there, you know, it slides in, and I put it in my pocket, and then nobody can get it. What I like about the revolver coming in and out of the pocket is, is its shape. You can see that it's shaped right here to come out the top of my pocket and it slides right out. That's why they're really cool. If we take one of Bob's, if I grab Bob's Glock over here, is this the 42 or the 43? 42. 42. So it's about the same size, but when I stick it in there, you can see that it's got this lip back here. And what is that going to do? Gets hung up on my and pocket. And it's a more square shape too. I don't mind the square shape. It's just this gets hung yeah. up on my pocket. The tang that it does. Yeah. yeah. So, and then the last thing about the pocket revolver and law enforcement carries them as backups a lot. And it's one of the reasons I carry it as a backup. Pocket you, auto, you mean? You know, no, I carry a pocket revolver and so do they. Oh yeah, okay. Is because... We're going to double confirm that this thing is empty before I put my hands in front yes, of it. Yes, I see clear. Okay. If you push this into something or someone, there's no way it will fire. It goes out of battery because the yep. slide comes back a little bit. Yep. So it won't work. My pocket my pocket revolver, Double check. With there's no check. way that that's going to happen because there's nothing to go out of battery. Right. The, the cylinder is either closed it's or it's still going to fire if you, you if you have a contact shot you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. A contact where you're you're having to put that gun right up against their body. And you might not think that that ever happens, but law enforcement, it happens all the time. They get in a fight over a gun, a knife, over the officer's main gun, and then they're rolling around on the ground, and then this cop takes a semi-automatic out of his pocket, pushes it into the person, and it, now it's out of battery. Whereas the revolver, I sit there pushing into him, pull the trigger. Yeah. The other thing that does happen with the with guns is that your shirts get caught on them on the semi-autos revolver no shirt to get All caught the on. rounded edges and well and then when i'm firing the gun if i'm firing in close proximity to somebody else or myself the only thing that has to turn is this cylinder right here mm -hmm. and the slide doesn't have to go back and forth right when the slide goes back and forth that's a chance to get yeah, caught on a so shirt you, or you something. eliminate that problem too so that's why i carry my pocket revolver as my backup gun good good stuff good stuff folks uh Thanks for watching. If you like this video, we have a whole bunch of other videos that are extremely educational. Even some of them contain footage from some of the classes we teach, right? Yep. If you wanted to ever go to one of our classes and you can't make it, these videos are the next best thing. You can go online. Go online to ShootersClubMembers.com. $75 a year or $8 a month. It's well worth the price. We've got guys that have been years and years. There's 90 different videos plus up there. Plus him and I do extra podcasts. We do extra videos with extra guests. You just had Spencer Keepers on. You've yep. had Masada Yub. Lots of people have been on there. So it's well worth it. Go to ShootersClubMembers.com and you can get a lot of instructional videos where you see us talk more about why I carry a pocket revolver and why you might want one. And then how do you run a little revolver like that? And how do you keep it running and keep it fed? Even how to shoot the small semi-autos. We got that on there too. So ShootersClubMembers.com, $8 a month, $75 a year. A link is going to be below this video also. And uh, check it out. Isn't there a free video they can watch too? On that front page, there is a free bit video of me running an AR with open sights. If you can learn the two techniques, one of them is really only good for open sights. The other one's good for any rifle that you use. If you lose, learn those two techniques and use them, it would be well worth your $75 for the year. And that's the free video. Like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. See that difference? It's crazy.